Like many veterans, this last week has been one that has seen me struggle through anger and grief and rage. The feeling abandonment of not just a country, but the sacrifice that my friends made. I've been to funerals from Poole to Dunblane. I've watched good men go into the earth, taking with them a part of me and a part of all of us. Because I was never prouder than when I was decorated by the 82nd Airborne after the capture of Musakala. It was a huge privilege, a huge privilege to be recognised by such an extraordinary unit in combat. To see their Commander-in-Chief call into question the courage of men I fought with, to claim that they ran, it's shameful. Those who have never fought for the colours they fly should be careful about criticising those who have. Because what we've done in these last few days is we've demonstrated that it's not armies that win wars. Armies can get tactical victories and operational victories that can hold a line. They can just about make room for peace, make room for people like us to talk, to compromise, to listen. It's nations that make war. Nations endure. Nations mobilize and muster. Nations determine and have patience. And here we've demonstrated, sadly, that we, the West, the United Kingdom, does not. So I leave with one image. It is the image of a man whose name I never knew, carrying a child who had died hours earlier, carrying this child into our firebase and begging for help. Now, there was nothing we could do. It was over. Because, Mr Speaker, this is what defeat looks like. It's when you no longer have the choice as to how to help. This doesn't need to be defeat. But at the moment, it damn well feels like it.